this is the Crappie Connection brought to you by Redneck Rubber, Power Crappie, Visit Ridgeland, b and Poles, K-9 Fishing, Cornfield Fishing Gear, Bobby Garland Baits, Jenko Fishing, Denali Rods, The Direction TV, Top Hat Jigs, Crappie Magnet, Anderson Minnow Farm, Hook and Bullet Purpose Built Optics. Brad Chapel back at the Grizzly Jig Show 2023 Spring Show. Man, is it packed out there or what, guys? Huh. It's, a mad, it. it's a madhouse. It's a madhouse. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's elbow to elbow. Man, I, I've, I just wonderful. pulled up and I've never seen this many trucks out here. They're yeah. up and down the road. The parking lot's full. And then I walk in the store and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's wall to wall. This is the Super Bowl right here. This is the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's the Super Bowl. Well, you know, I came in at 7 30 this morning right after the doors open. Yeah. I'm parking on the highway. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to go around back. <laughs> anyway, uh, probably won't need too much of an introduction, but go ahead and introduce yourselves and uh, tell us where you're from, what you do, and uh, I've got a really good subject I, that I thought of both of you guys for. All right. Well, my name's Steve Coleman. I'm from Real Foot Lake over in Northwest Tennessee, and uh, I'm a fishaholic. How many time world champion now? Eight. Eight time Eight. world champion. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Missed, missed three more by uh, second place. That's, that's phenomenal. That's You're definitely a, the, the Hall of Fame of crappie fishing for sure. I just love doing it. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. He's in the Legends of Hall of Fame just for that reason. No doubt. Him yeah. and Ronnie both. Yeah. 2011. Yeah. I see why. Yeah. Well deserved. A lot of work. A lot of work. A lot very, of work. very much so. Kent? Hey, uh, I'm Kent Driscoll. Uh, I'm from Nolensville, Tennessee, and I uh, uh, have the pleasure of being the BNM Pro Staff Manager. Yeah. And, uh, which is a lot of fun. Got a lot of great fishermen. Uh, met a lot of great people. And probably most importantly, I've learned more about crappie fishing from these guys. Oh, yeah. Than most people will in a lifetime. Yeah. You know, that's even, we'll talk about the Grizzly Jig Show. Um, there's an unlimited amount of knowledge standing out in that room right now. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you want to get into crappie fishing, I would yeah. definitely suggest make the time and effort to come up here one spring, use a couple of vacation days and get to visit. These guys out here, I don't care who they are. They love talking about crappie fishing. Every one of us. That's right. Yeah, if you want to learn something about crappie fishing, you know, they got some of the best seminars in the country going on right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just, just come out and, you know, sit at one or two of them. You know, you'll learn a lot. Right. I'll tell, yeah. you, I tell you what, I mean, that's kind of our topic today, I believe. Yeah, that's and, right. And, uh, you know, I'd have to put that right at the top of the list. If you're right. a beginner, just learning yep. to crappie fish is put it on your checklist to come to the Grizzly Jig Show. That's right. And meet these guys. Yep. And spend some time in the store and, you know, meet some of these fishing guides and, you know, maybe meet some guys from your local area that can mentor right. you a little bit. Yeah. There's so many techniques that you can learn to do it. But, you know, our topic, like to kind of hit on, is how to become a good crappie fisherman. And I've got two of the best in my mind on today's show. And, uh, you know, you can kick it off. I know Kent's been around this industry forever, as well as Steve here. But how do you get from just being, you know, thinking about becoming a crappie fisherman, but how do you become a good one in your mind? Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's two different styles, you know. Uh, you know, I grew up since I was probably five or six years old doing it, you know. Yeah. You know, I had the best opportunity to live on the water, you know, and kind of just grow up with what the fish do every day. Right. You know, and uh, and having good equipment, you know, I can remember the, the B&M poles, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, seven, eight years old, I can remember those poles hanging in my daddy's boat shed. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
don't touch them poles, you know. I could get the. <laughs> right. They came poles, but I couldn't get them green <laughs> right. poles. Well, I, I ended up doing that. But uh, You've got a few poles now, I bet. Yeah, yeah. But I've had the experience ever since, you know, day one, really, you know, and I kind of grew up with it. But, you know, as somebody that's older getting into it, uh, they'll be a good crop of fishermen, you know, just like Kim was talking about, you know, uh, you know, start coming to these shows and, you know, learning yeah. from the people that's done it all their life. And uh, there's a lot of good people out here that will share anything they know with you. Mm-hmm. you know? Hey, who, who's some of y'all's mentors? You know, you and Ronnie oh, from back in the day. I mean, some old school guys. You know, uh, you know, when we first went down Weiss Lake in Alabama Fish, right? Uh, Sam Heaton was oh, yeah. the guy. Oh, that's <laughs> was, yeah. Sam know. Heaton. That's, yeah. a, that's a good one. But, there. but if you go back today, you know, uh, you know, we watched Sam. You know. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, you watched some of these other guys, what they were doing. Right, we watched other guys. And listen. And they were some old tournament fishermen down south. I can't remember their names, but uh, Ronnie and I, we always talk about, you know, I'd like to beat them, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to beat them. <laughs> I'd like to beat them one time. <laughs> and when it finally happened, I mean, it was like a drug, you know. Yeah. We were wide open men, so, you know, I kind of, I'm going to stay wide open. I don't, yeah, I'm not going to give it yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, know, you, I think you guys had some good mentors. Oh, we did, yeah. Sam and his, yeah, I can remember first seeing him, the man that didn't wear shoes, he wore flip-flops, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's Flip-flop cool, man. Flip-flop Sam, yeah. yeah. I think of a, a legend in our area, and I know Kenton, I think Steve knows him, Rabbit Rogers. Oh, you stole yeah. my thunder, dude. Man. Is he not one of the best? He is phenomenal. I still see him all the time at the boat ramps, just about every day, and I'm like, why is he out here and it's freezing cold this morning? He's... And like you said, it's a drug. Once you become a good crappie fisherman, this is this is a new kind of drug. Oh, if you hadn't experienced it, That's well, right. it's it's the best kind to be it's honest. It's the best kind. I mean, this is the best kind of drug you could ever take. And uh, and once you get addicted to it, you can't get enough. And I think now um, there's so much information out there, right? For you know a new fisherman, you know, yeah. and even for the fisherman like you're saying that wants to become a better crappie fisherman. Right. And I think it starts with, you know, kind of how your upbringing was. You know, Ronnie and Steve grew up on Real Foot Lake. Yep. Um, they had some good people that taught them. They came from fishing families, you know. Um, and then they became the legends. Yeah. And a lot of us Absolutely. have looked up to these well, guys. Know, Ronnie grew up on the other side of the lake from me. And we kind of just. Was uh, that the good side of the lake or the really, bad side of the lake? It was territorial, what it was. Oh, really? <laughs> we were like, all right, the stay Mason, off, stay off the my Mason, side of the lake. Yeah, yeah. Mason Dixon line, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it was a period of time there. I can't remember when it was. We just finally joined forces, you know. Yeah. Can't so, beat him, join him. I see it. Yeah. That's yeah. It. How cool is that? You know, yeah. I, I know you both of you guys are really good about this, and I've talked about it, I'm sure, every episode that I. I but is how important is details when it comes to crappie fishing in your eyes? Yeah. Oh. Good equipment is, 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 is your, I mean, I, I preach good equipment, you know. Yeah. Uh, just like b and I can't remember how many years I've been with b and but it's been, <laughs> it's been ever since the beginning, you know. Right. Over 20. Uh, yeah. yeah, but, uh, you know, good equipment, you know, and the detail part of it is, is like we talked about, to find someone that but has let's done go it. into the details on the, on the equipment side. Okay. You know, in my mind, and I said this yesterday as well, is there's a reason why there's so many different poles right because True. that that equipment has to fit the technique that you're doing to be really successful absolutely yep. you, you don't go hunt elephants with a 22 that's right you that's know right. what i'm saying that's right. yeah yeah and it's i think it's the same way in the crappie fishing world and uh one of the reasons we've been really successful is as a company b and m is we've tried to make a pole for every technique yeah and we try to listen to the guys like you know caps and coleman right. and sam heat and and even some of these newer guys that are, you know, we're working with these days, we, we try to listen to them to come up with the best yeah. possible product made. And a lot of these other good companies, crappie companies out here are doing the same thing, whether it's Crappie Magnet or Bobby Garland, yeah. you know, Canine Fishing Line. I mean, you know, Cornfield Crappie. There's just a lot of these guys have adapted the philosophy, the suppliers of coming out with a product, field testing it, okay, and tweaking it and then coming up with a final product that's really good that applies to the masses to yep. a lot of people and a lot of it's technique technique specific type right. product you know braided fishing line versus monofilament you right know? i mean golly you know years ago there really wasn't a whole lot of braided fishing line for crappie yeah but 
you know now here we are you know a lot of these guys are using braid because they believe it's a little bit more sensitive and then now look look at these boats these days i mean um you know the average crappie fisherman 20 years ago is fishing out of an aluminum boat probably mm -hmm. 17 feet long and a 50 horsepower motor right and now you see crappie fishermen fishing not only in aluminum boats but you know these big rangers yeah. you know with 250s and, and and 300 horsepower motors Minn Kota with you know the Ultrex type trolling motor, Garmin with the Force trolling motor, and then the you know the the hundred pound elephant in the room is forward facing sonar. Right. You know Garmin got that started, yeah. and then Minn Kota's jumped into it. And Lawrence has now you know got a version of it too, and it's just the equipment has gotten better and better and better every year. And with that, I think it makes us more effective, don't you think, Steve? Right. You know you know you start out you got. You got chicken poles, you got trolling poles, right. you got power trolling poles, waiting poles. I mean, and yeah, now, and yeah. now everybody's matching the the equipment with the poles. You right. Know, what you're doing, you know, you may have a jig, you may have a a trolling rig, you know, you may have a power trolling rig. Then they're matching the boats to what you're doing. You know, it just mm -hmm. it all falls in place. And you know, I, I go back and I, I think of becoming a good crappie fisherman and. My suggestion would be look at a technique that intrigues you. Right. Yeah, I agree. Whether it's, you know, spider rigging, <clears throat> long line trolling, pulling crankbaits, live scoping, whatever. But really take the time to learn everything about that technique instead of trying to say, you know what, I'm going to become a crop efficient and i got to know how to do it all. Right, no. It, it don't happen that way. Yeah. it's Not for me. It's funny you say that, Brad, because that's kind of – that's kind of how I've come along. I've just, yeah. I'll get on one of those techniques and say, okay, I'm going to go learn it. And I kind of feel like I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, I feel like I can do it all. I can go shoot docks. I can pull crankbaits. I can yeah. long line troll. And the thing about it is I don't really prefer one or the other. Right. I just like going and doing it. Yeah. And kind of like saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to this lake and I think they're going to bite this technique. And, and I load all my stuff up and get ready to do that. It's kind of like tournament fishing too. I mean, yeah. sometimes you do that in tournament fishing too. You know, you bring a couple of sets of poles and a couple, of, you know, several sets of different baits and kind of go into it open-minded, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to try this, this, and this, and then narrow it down to whichever one works the best. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that that works in fun fishing too. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, that's what makes, to me, that's what makes it so much fun. And, you know, the, you know, when you're talking to, to people about, you know, how do you get better? Yeah. Well, you learn different techniques to catch fish. Right. That's right. And you listen to your mentors. And now, you know, with the internet, with social media and YouTube. Right. You know. There's and, a lot of information. I mean, even Instagram, TikTok. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. So, you know, I would I would tell a lot of people, man, use the tools that you have. Right. And, you yep. know, buy the tools that you can afford, you know, and maybe stretch yourself a little bit when you're buying your equipment and yeah. your product because steve's right i mean the better the equipment you have mm -hmm. the more effective you're gonna be and you know i can't take you know my 21 foot warrior going to go to the ocean saltwater fish right it's, it's just not going to work it's kind of like taking a kayak to grenada that's yeah. not going to work out on the big lake yeah. so uh i think it's important to uh to you know kind of be open-minded use a lot of resources um, you know, the crappy connection here. I mean, what better way oh, yeah. uh, to learn is through these podcasts, you know. Um, I mean, this is a great way to, to, and it's free, Yeah. you know, is to, you know, sign on, listen to these podcasts while you're driving in the car. That's right. All right. What you're doing on Facebook Live on Tuesday. What, what do you call it, Tuesday? To, today's bike. Today's bike. Today's bike. Today's yeah. Bike. And, I mean, you know, I've been, I've been logging in here the past couple of weeks, and I've been learning stuff. Yeah. And I guess it comes down to listening, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you talk about that, Steve. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I know you're kind of you're a student of the game. I mean, you know, just like I talk about, you know, we go back to these old times, you know, the old timers that, that did catch these fish. Right. He's right. You got to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, you you got to listen. You got to get that knowledge, and you got to take that knowledge. You got to apply it. You know. I yeah. think that's a big part of that is right. applying what you're listening to. Right. You, know, you listen to it, but if you yeah. don't actually go out there and apply it, it don't help you. Just like Ken said, you know, everybody water is, you know, it's different, you know, the ocean, you know, yeah. uh, river systems, you know, uh, man-made lakes, everything's different, you know. But if you live on a lake somewhere or you got a body of water that you like to fish, uh, you know, take what technique works there, you know. 
and look for that knowledge because it's out there. You yeah. know, hey, I, these podcasts or I got seminars a, or whatever. I got well, a good one for you. So, and we all know him is Mr. A. E. Smith. Oh yes, yeah. sir. All right. So you know, Mr. A. E. was one of the guys that I looked up to. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. And I actually met him before I met Les. Mm-hmm. And, Did I? Uh, yeah. And just man, I struck up a friendship with him and. Uh, he, 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 I'll just tell you, he whooped my tail down at Tunica one time yeah. with those power trolling with those eight-ounce weights. And me and my buddy thought we'd won that thing until he come off the hill and I seen the <laughs> tail sticking out of the bucket. No, no, but that's, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he knew what he was doing. He was yeah. the last one to weigh in. He, I mean, he had a heavy heavy sack. But I, I struck up a conversation with Mr. A.E. and got to know him, and we exchanged phone numbers. And through the years, um, he would call me and we would talk. And there was a lot of times – and I didn't realize this in the beginning, but he was taking notes. So there were some Magnolia tournaments and stuff that yeah. we had done pretty well in. And uh, Mr. A.E. was like, hey, tell me what that was again. What color was that? Uh-huh. You know, being a greenhorn, you know, I'm just like, you right. know, <laughs> yapping away, talking to him. But he was writing this stuff down. Oh, wow. He kept meticulous notes. Okay. So for someone that wants to get better, you want to take it to another level, take notes, man. Take your lake, date it. Put the water level, temperature, time of year, you know. Even when you do bad. Yeah, barometric <laughs> yeah. pressure. When I you mean, do bad, it's well, bear I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, that's that's where Mr. A.E., he kind of, hmm. I think he called everybody that did well in those yeah. tournaments. And uh, from, I didn't know that. that yeah, that's something oh, yeah. I never knew. It, oh, it's a great story. And let me tell you something. I've actually got pictures. Um, you know, Les and I are really good friends. Yeah. And, and uh, one day Les and I were up at his place, and we were going through Mr. A.E.'s uh, scrapbook right and those notes were in there hmm. and they were dated and it was <laughs> there was the fisherman that he was talked to your names are in those notebooks yeah i'm sure and i thought that That's was pretty cool, cool. Yeah. yeah and you know I've, I've i've heard other fishermen say that they keep fishing logs mm-hmm. i've never I, I try to keep it up here you know Me too. but yep. but i'm gonna tell you there's a time and date if you were to go back and look at your fishing notes or logs like with water level oh, yeah. especially and and water temperatures I guarantee you that's that kind of stuff. If you'll keep up with it, it'll make a difference in the yeah, long run. Yeah, it'll tell a story. It, it will tell a story. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I hear a lot of guys doing notes, and my hat's off to them, and I think that is a really good dedication to become a good crappie fisherman is taking those detailed records of what you're doing, like like we just said, right. even on the bad days, because that's, right. that's something that uh, we all going to experience if you're a crappie fisherman. You're going to experience a bad day, especially when you're starting out doing this stuff. But take notes of what you did that day to not to do it again. Yeah, for sure. That's right. I, I tell you another one, too, you know, is, is guides. Is, yeah. is fishing, going fishing and hiring crappie guides. Right. And hiring different ones on different lakes. There's so much Absolutely. knowledge you can gain from a crappie guide in an eight-hour fishing day. It's almost invaluable. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, one of the things we've done at B&M is surround ourselves with fishing guides. Right. You know, and I know Steve does some part-time guiding. I know you do a lot of guiding. Yeah. And, you know, man, if, if I was, you know, uh, looking to learn, you know, Ross Barnett, yeah. man, I'd be looking you up. All right. If I was coming to Real Foot and maybe spending three or four days and I wanted to go out with someone that knew yeah. the lake, I'd, I'd be calling Steve Coleman, yeah, man. I know, mean. You know, when you when you come off a lake and you're running somebody and they got a box full of fish. Right. And they say, hey, you remember me? Four years ago, five years ago, you took me out fishing. Yeah. They said we took everything that you taught us, and look here, we can catch fish now. Yeah, that kind of, that kind of, you know, oh, yeah. makes your chest How, stick out. Yeah. Absolutely. How does that make you feel? Walking yeah. through here, I yeah. mean, walking yeah. through Grizzly, I'm sure yeah. you've got man. You know, I've used your poles through the years, and yep. blah blah, caught my best fish, biggest fish ever. It's just a such a rewarding thing to do, and um, my favorite guide trips to do is actually when I have somebody call me up and say, hey. I don't care if we catch a fish today. I don't care if we catch 10. I just want to get out there and learn things. Right. Teaching trips. I, that is by far my favorite guide trip to do. Right. And, you know, it takes all the pressure off me as far as uh, we got to try to get a limit today or anything to that degree. But then I can say, well, all right, well, let's go pull jigs for a little while. All right. We did that. Let's go cast us some brush pots for a little while. I like changing things up. Sure. So it kind of gives me a day like, hey, heck yeah, I can throw a little bit of everything in the boat and go a little, try different things out. Uh, I did a trip last year. A guy said, 
I want to see how you find fish. And that's like, man, that's awesome to me because I'm like, I can go explore. Right. You know, when I'm fishing every day for, for a living to say to put fish in a boat, I don't get to explore as much as I used to. Right. So I was like, we're going to go to an area that I'm not that familiar with and we're going to see what we can find and how I found them. And the guy had a great day. But, you know, like Kent just said, getting some guys and say, hey, I just really want to learn today if that's your goal. Yeah. If 99% of the guides would be like all over it. Uh, yeah. It all takes it, it right. takes the pressure off of catching fish. Right. And quite honestly, I think, you know, it opens the guide up to showing you a lot more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, trying two or three different techniques, going to a new area of the lake, you know, just being open-minded, you know, using your electronics. Right. You know, or, or, or maybe, you know, uh, you know, you just do something kind of off the wall that you hadn't done in a while. You know, maybe, you, you know, go, yeah. go shoot docks or something crazy. I, I pulled crankbaits, I think, three or four trips last summer. And the main reason I pulled them because it was people wanting to get the boat, wanting to learn how to pull crankbaits. Right. You know, I could have caught more fish if I was going to use live scope and, or what have you. But their intention for that trip was to pull crankbaits. And I was like, man, this is like one of my favorite days this summer because I get to relax. I get to actually go back fishing and right. probably got to talk to them way more than right. I normally do if I'm live scoping with people because more of that you're like, oh, to the left, to the right, up and down, you know. But tell a guide what you're wanting to learn on techniques, and there's going to be a guide no matter where you live in this country that can teach you. Yeah, I'll tell you what, something was pretty cool for me is Corey Thomas taught me how to pull, pull planter boards and jigs. Oh, yeah. And man, I mean, it was only one, it only had to go one time because mm -hmm. I already knew the, the basic basics. principle. But right. I, I, what I didn't understand is the rod setup. Yeah, how to set those rods and rod holders, and how to put them out and bring them in without getting tangled. And basically, he taught me in a half a day. Yeah, what would have probably taken me three or four or five days right. to learn. And I, man, I'm appreciative for him showing me that. And now I can go out and show people how to do it. Yeah, so, yeah that's because he was eager to learn, and he I, he talked to you the right way. He did, and and to be honest with you, I showed him how to use a slip float in deep water, and right. uh, minnow fishing brush piles. And dude, he's taking that to a whole nother level now. He's showing me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. And that's the good thing about you know teaching yeah. people. It's like well, yeah. fishing tournaments. You oh yeah. I've taken people on guide trips, and then all of a sudden they'll come back and start fishing. Oh, they did years ago. Start fishing tournaments, and I'm like, man, I might have taught them too bad, too well here. <laughs> you know, this guy over, he said, you got fish fishing floats in that deep water. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> Forty foot deep with a float, it ain't gonna work. Well, I went to Del Hall, I guess what? It worked. It worked. Uh, yeah. That's well, all I'm going to catch him. Uh, yeah. Really? So he's spot on. Keep that mind open. Yeah. yeah. All I can say is touche yeah. because remember last <laughs> summer I got in the boat with you with the little Mighty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which is the retractable. Right. 20, 25 foot retractable. Yeah. Make them in 10, 15, 20, 25, 25 footers. Well, Steve has been fishing that style all his life. And then we came yeah. out with this pole. I hadn't fished with it yet. And, uh, He's like, man, I'm gonna show you how. It won't take long. And so we start fishing. And of course, he's catching them left and right. He's putting it right on them. He's catching behind his back. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's look at it's, the screen and go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was putting on a, a show. Yeah. Right. Well, check out TikTok. Uh, I will. Yeah, yeah. You got to see that. And uh, anyways, he uh, he he just hands me the pole. Doesn't say nothing. Just, he's yeah. like, got it. Your turn. Say, so do it. And he's like, do it. Finger to win. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so, you know, I start flannering around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, he's like, left, right. You know, he said, when well, you catch one, you got to retract it. Well, well, first thing I do, what do I do? I raise it up in the air like this, try to drag him in. You can't do that. You got to just retract Pop the it in. Yeah. He's like, hey, next time. You know, I think I lost him, too. Yeah. The first, very Stay first attention. One. Stay yeah. attention. Yeah. yeah. Like anything and else. The funny part was, is Sandy was in the boat with us, too. Uh huh. And then she's tr she's telling me how to do it too, and I'm sitting here thinking, man, I got to tighten my game up. <laughs> but by the end of the day, I I wouldn't say I mastered it, but yeah. I was proficient. Right. And man, it was fun, dude. And so he taught me his style mm -hmm. literally in a half a day that he'd been doing all his life using that retractable pole. I've never done it. And I it's just, fun. it's dude, it's fun, man. It's fun. It, it, it is sounds fun. sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were at Arkabullo. We was out on a flat. Water's about seven, eight foot deep. We had yeah. about 10 foot of line on there. And it's no different. I mean, you couldn't get close to them. Yeah. I mean, we were literally reaching out there 20, 25 foot and catching them. Uh, and yeah, it's fun, man. They just suck it up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, we, uh, I tell you, it, it was a good time. Hmm. 
It was a real good time. That's one of the best times I've had. I, I, you know, it's going out, and we've done so many things for so many years now, and you see a new technique like that, and you're like, right. oh, man, that's so cool. I know, why didn't I ever think about this? But right. going out and trying things, yeah, and that's how, even to me, is how to become a good crappie fisherman is saying, you know what, I'm going to go out and try something different today. And literally for me to get better at live scope, I had to take all the other poles out of my boat. Sure. Yeah, do one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I, I know if I get frustrated doing this, I'm going to go back to my old habits. So I literally had to take the other poles out of my boat just to concentrate on doing one technique. Um, I, I'm sure it's the way for a lot of people, but I was like so carried away with my old habits that I couldn't really adapt to the new ones until I just said, you know what, take them out of the boat, concentrate on what we're trying to learn here, and it all starts clicking after a while. And, and I think a lot of people even no matter what technique it could be is they think it's going to happen that quick and for most people it don't right you know it could it might be just the thing for you but whatever the technique might be but get out there and try it and really study it pay attention to some of the details get the right equipment yeah right equipment yeah that's it and then before long think uh, i believe people and yourself i have the confidence to call yourself a good crappie fisherman absolutely I mean, exactly. I, I've had two of the best guys here today, uh, both founding fathers of this board in my mind, and uh, can't appreciate you guys enough. Absolutely, you know, man. What you got to remember to do, just like Kent, myself, any other guide or fisherman that's fishing these tournaments, you know, is, uh, hey, you know, don't keep that knowledge. You know, yeah. pass it along. That's right. You yeah. know, a lot of guys want to keep it secret, don't want to tell mm -hmm. you what to do. Hey, pass it along. That's the only way that you're going to keep it going. That's right. That's the only way you're going to teach somebody. Yeah, if we didn't pass along yeah. the stuff that we're talking, it wouldn't be all these hey, people. When they learn to catch those fish like that, they look back at you and they they respect appreciate you. Yeah, yeah they're right. going to say, somebody somebody showed me. That's so right. So I want to show the next, you know, exactly. next yeah. generation. Pay it forward. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, well, appreciate you guys. Comment some on uh, some techniques that you might want to learn and – Hey, we'll try to help you out with them in the future as well on the Crappie Connection. And subscribe. Make sure you tune in to Tuesday nights, today's bite, 7 p.m. It's going to be Facebook Live and also YouTube. And uh, we're having a blast with that. I know Kent's on it a good bit. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, absolutely. Love it, man. Hey, appreciate b and I'm now a and m guy as well. Number yeah, one, yeah. Number one. Number one, one. Yeah. yeah. I love guys. I love guys. I always have. Well, so I'm super excited. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you on the Pro Staff Parade for sure. And, and uh, I just think there's so many common things that we have that we yeah. can, you know, work together on uh, promoting the sport and raising it up to the next level. And uh, you can only do it with good people. Yeah, uh, that's, that's right. all I can tell you, man. Yeah. I mean, you know that. Yeah. Um, we've done that with B&M. Um, I've done it in my personal life, right. in, my, in my work life. And just surround yourself with good people, and, and the rest of it will take care of itself for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, – you know, we appreciate what the Crappie Connection does. Um, you know, I look forward to, uh, you know, future podcasts. And I'll tell you what I'd like to see is is breaking down a new lake. How Absolutely. do you break it down? Looking at maps, yeah. looking at the diff different tools. I'd love to hear you guys talk more about, because oh, yeah. I know what will happen. You guys will start talking, and then some other guys will start tuning in. <laughs> Not, yeah. And you start picking, you know, you just start picking yeah. little bits. Yeah. Um, hey, yeah. Maybe this week. Yeah. yeah. I like it. That'd be that'd be a good one, man. I that's promise you. One. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. Eight, nine, yeah. Eight, eight <laughs> coming, yeah. Coming from the yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. easy for him. That's an easy one. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and next time, uh, you got Brad Chapel here. I got... Steve Cowan. Ken Driscoll. Appreciate you guys. Holla. Holla, boys. Out. Out of my front, big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can 